Hello and welcome to the Backyard Art School. My name is Julia and today I would like to show you what we've been up to so far with our Term 2 printmaking class. Uh, I'm walking to the studio at the moment and I'm just going to um, go down and film the last class for our online classes which is how to colour uh, the lino prints but I would like to show you all the works that we did yesterday when we did printmaking uh, and also we have a fantastic um, starting point of the group work that is being created at the moment which I'm really excited about uh, and it is of um, our Tuesday afternoon class. We had a public holiday on Monday, but our Tuesday afternoon class has started. And I just want to show you what they started to create, um, which has been a underwater scene. And it is based on all of the individual artworks that has been created. We then discuss how to uh, create a composition on a larger format. And they started doing this. Um, they're creating beautiful little penguins which have been print made um, with foam prints and these are now ready to be put onto a background which they um, started creating last week and uh, this has is um, with underwater scene of Manly and in the water unfortunately they are drawing um, rubbish, plastic rubbish. So this is one of the major threats of threatened species especially in our, that live in our waters and um, the little penguin, especially being so close, it's got a rook that is located um, underneath Manly Wharf. Uh, this area um, has a lot of tourists that come in, a lot of people coming yeah, through, and cute. also, unfortunately, a lot of rubbish. But even with saying that, I'm standing on the street yeah. now and I'm just looking down and I can I see, see um, oh, there's actually pretty. some rubbish, uh, which is... Oh, very nice. But actually now... Show me. That looks awesome. But I was just about Good to cross the road and then looking down, I could just see now some rubbish that's in our streets. And this just can be from when you take the garbage bins out. Um, some of the rubbish can fall out of the bins if you overfill them. And, um, and it falls when the garbage men collect them and it's over full um, and the rubbish falls down the street. So I'm just going to show you what that is. And it's gone straight into the gutter. I will be picking this up. Um, but these are sort of the things which happens when you get rubbish into the waterways uh, by falling from the gutters into the gutters and then going into the waterways into the beach. So I'm just going to show you what that is. So if you can see, it's just near a car here and we've got some, I don't know, what is it? Some zooey plastic, don't know what it is, some sort of food packaging and then also a milk carton. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk over now. Oh, and I've also got another bit of plastic. So if you can ever find plastic in the gutter like this, just pick it up and shove it in your bin. It's like, you know, not that hard to do. Um, especially if you're going to be close to a rubbish bin. But I'll cross over now. Just going into the studio. So just now going to the studio and I'm just walking up. Literally picked up whatever rubbish I just saw then and popped it in the bin. And these are things that we can all do. Just little things to help um, with reducing the amount of plastic waste uh, that floats into our rubbish. And then just grab it, go and put it into the live recycle bin. Ooh, and that's it. Hi, so I'm in the studio now and I've just walked in and I'm just uh, putting up a little bit of a show and tell. Uh, yesterday's class's um, lino prints are still drying, so I'll show you those. Uh, and then I also have the Tuesday afternoon's class and I just wanted to show you uh, just the process of where they are at now. They've got one more class next week, which will finish um, all of the artworks uh, for term two, printmaking and mixed media. Um, so I'm just going to turn the camera around and just show you what they have done. So as you can see, we have um, a folder. This is the art folder that we usually start off with. And they have a collection of all the drawings that they've created, including drawings of penguins that I demonstrate step by step. As you can see over here, this is an example of the drawings that I do in the class of the little penguins. 
um, and we work off photos. And this is the drawing that um, one of our students has done of the penguin. And inside the folder, he also has the prints that he has created using foam prints. Um, and they also started off with creating drawings of, um, of their underwater scene. And first of all, they, they looked at creating little compositions. So little sketches, little compositions of their underwater scene, different sort of ideas. And then from that, they then, uh, I'll just take one of these prints just to show you how we adapt it to the larger artwork. Then from that, they then um, create the uh, major work. They've got two artworks that they create, two underwater scenes. This is by the same student. And as you can see, you've got the little penguin. It's been hooked by a fisherman. And also we've got some netting. We've got some can holders. Uh, we've got a coal, it says coals plastic bag. Um, and we've also got some sort of uh, orca or shark at the bottom. And here we, again, we have a fishing boat with a hook and line uh, with some of the can holders, some netting. We've got a Milo container, a Coco Pops container, plastic bag from Coles, and a clothes hanger. So these are sort of all the rubbish that they could think of that may be found in the water. Um, and then they also created their, separately their beautiful prints of the penguin, which is a foam print using a method of um, doing two prints. Uh, the first one being the silhouette. And then the second one being um, the white area that they um, then printed. And they made a series about four or five prints of that. Um, and then one of the prints that they'll include into their actual, um, their drawn background that they've done, whichever one that they'd like to include it into. Uh, and then the other one is going to be donated to the group work. So this is the group work. And as you can see, can you see the Milo? So this student has drawn the Milo container and I asked each student that they need to choose one of their rubbish items that they'd like to include onto the large scale uh, group work. So there it is. And she has done the Milo just here. And then as you can see, there's another student, she's still working on a milk carton. She's got a little cow drawn there. And then we also have another student who just wanted to do a little fish. Uh, and then we also have a Coca-Cola uh, bottle as well. And then, then there's also the can rings um, and a necklace and jellyfish or a plastic bag. Um, and this is the composition that they have chosen to do. So this is where I sort of, at the, at the front of the class, I will actually uh, conduct... Um, and we'll talk with the students as what they would like to do. So these are the drawing demonstrations of the underwater scene, like as a sample with the rubbish that they could create a composition, which is a circular one, um, with the floating elements in it or, um, and then how to adapt that or make this into a major work. And so I'm actually just showing that they could have these elements underneath the water. They then in turn, uh, draw these elements with using wax, uh, crayons. And this is on a really nice quality um, art paper. And then at the top, they will be painting. So they'll be painting a um, manly wharf or a manly beach uh, with those lovely big trees that they have, which is very um, unique to manly. And then it'll be an underwater scene, which will um, then have the penguins and each student. We have nine students in our class. They will be donating a penguin, a penguin, and this penguin they'll be putting in after they've painted the background, they'll be sticking it into the background, um, and then that will be their donation. And then also I'll have the students paint the top area with the trees and the buildings and so forth uh, for next week as well. So that is the work in progress, um, and it will be all finished for next week. So the students have already done their lovely backgrounds. They need to just put their individual works stuck into their background area. Um, and then they'll be predominantly working on the group work next week, but then also they'll have an opportunity to frame their artwork 
um, for next week as well to, to then take their individual work home. Okay, and now with the older group, they are doing all their printmaking this week. So today's class that I have this afternoon, they will also be doing printmaking. And this is from yesterday's class. So it is just on the desk drying. They do about four prints, um, each of their lino cut. Uh, and as you can see, they look pretty amazing. I'm going to take some individual photos just to show you. Actually, no, I'll just turn the camera around just to show you. Um, so I'll just turn. So this student uh, has done a lovely landscape uh, print. Uh, there's a little ant, oh, sorry, spider on there. A little landscape print, and it's of a landscape of the sea, uh, sandbanks and what she has uh, here is a dingo so she's actually created a beautiful print of the Australian dingo uh, and then we also have this lovely print and it's of kangaroo so we've got the Australian kangaroo with this amazing background that she's carved and um, this print is with the gum tree out in the desert beautiful kangaroo uh, we also have a lovely print, and this is by Toby, I think, and this is by Anushka. But this is of a lovely little bird. Uh, I think it's a, um, a little bird on the tree branch in the foreground. So we spoke about compositions of having something in the foreground when you're doing a landscape, something in the middle ground, and then also something in the background. So these are sort of the things that I teach the students, and also... As you can see, he's really focused on the direction of his carving with the lino. So can you see all the little lovely line works that's in there that shows the water and then different directions of carving for the buildings and again, the buildings in the background and the beautiful birds. So this is going to be hand colored uh, next week and framed. So it's going to be quite beautiful. And that's actually what I'm going to be filming uh, today. So just after I start, stop filming here, I'm going to be uh, hand painting this print, which I've actually got as an online class. Um, and this is going to be um, demonstrate. I'm going to be uh, filming today just how to print, uh, paint these areas with color um, for the last class for my online members and my online students. Um, and then also we have a fantastic line by Andrew. You can actually see his name and look, he's very clever. Because as you know, with a print, if you go to do any line of prints, it's going to be reverse. So he is very clever in actually writing his name backwards or carving his name backwards, which is super careful, clever of him. Uh, and we also have a turtle. So this is great. Love this. So you can see we've got this lovely turtle and um, it is just coming out of an egg. And then there's a beach in the background. So that's going to look really lovely. And I'm going to finish off with just showing some of our samples, uh, videos from our online classes, just so you have an idea of some of the processes that's involved. So I hope you enjoy um, the last part of this video, which is just showing some of the processes that the students have learnt uh, for this term and which are also available on our online membership and over here I just want to show you uh, a student's folder so Andrew's already done the print here but the process was uh, starting off choosing the animal from photographs reference photos then from the reference photos doing quick sketches of how he would like to compose his lino then designing that into choosing one, which you chose this one or this one, and drawing that into a format that is the same size as the lino. There you go. Then he uh, put this, transferred it onto his lino, spent a couple of weeks, a few weeks uh, carving his lino, and then that is the result of his beautiful print at the end, his major work, which he's going to hand color next week as well. And also there is a practice piece, which is really important to use, I think, just to have cut a bit of lino off so that um, when you're carving, you can just have a bit of a relax or practice carving just before starting 
each day because it then warms you up into the process and the flow of what it feels like. Uh, and then over here we have our print set up for uh, today's class. I have two portrait format, which has been um, basically you put a portrait template underneath of the actual printing paper. So then when you get your print, which is just here, just want to show you. So you get your print, uh, you always ink up on this middle station. So the ink will be put onto the glass with the spatula. Make sure the roller is beautifully covered uh, when you're rolling it. So make sure you really do a nice even roll to spread it all out. So you have a nice um, even roll on the roller. Then you ink up your print nice and evenly as well. I always focus really carefully on the border areas first. And once you've done that, you transfer the print over to the uh, glass and underneath you register it with the pencil mark of what you've already registered before underneath. And then you lay your piece of paper over very carefully on top, take the print and that is what you come out with afterwards. So that is generally the process of it, just a quick uh, show. And as you can see, I've got a couple of workstations set up. So four students can be printing at a time. I usually help them with uh, putting the papers down and so forth, just so that if they've got dirty fingers, it minimizes the amount of fingerprints going on to um, the actual uh, major work. So that is the setup and I also have a drying rack outside. So once the print is taken, I then, um, the students can go outside and put those prints, prints in the drying racks to dry overnight. Okay, see you for now. I've got to go and pick up my students. You can take it off now. I think you'll be fine. Here we go. And do it in one, one go. Lovely. And let's have a look at what you've done. Lift it up. Lift it up. It's fine. It's your tester piece. It's good. Let's have a look. So you just need a little bit more pressure for the next one. Ooh, looking good. Beautiful. Looks great. Get in Beautiful, looking good. Ooh, show me, turn around. Oh, looks great. Good on you. Lift it up, otherwise it will spread. Let's have a look. Beautiful! The turtle and his little legs. <laughs> <laughs>